Hi everyone and welcome to today's uh, webinar Wednesday and today we are looking at Object 2 VR and introducing the skin editor. I'm Martin from Support and I'm joined today by... Hi there, I'm Karen. I'm working in the background uh, helping out with the Q&A. If you have a question, please feel free to ask us uh, in the Q&A tab. That's where we're looking. If you put it in the chat, we might miss it. And um, my other request is to keep the questions on topic. And that's it. I'll see you around. Thank you, Karen. Right. OK, so this is introducing the skin editor. Um, and this is what we're going to build today. Now, working on from last uh, from the last webinar, um, we just uh, put the images into Object 2 VR. This was the images of the um, scooter. The scooter, we then use the um, default skins um, to produce an output. But what we're doing today is we're going to build this. So we're going to have the buttons to zoom in and out. And you'll see that these buttons fade in and fade out as and when you reach limits and things like that. And a little a little info box there. So we're mainly concentrating on actions, um, logic blocks and placeholders. And all will become clear. And what these will also allow us to do is to build us a responsive design like this as well. OK, so that's what we will do. Do so with that said, let's jump to it. So I'm going to open up Object 2 VR, and like before, we opened it up, it came to the welcome screen. But this time around, because we had a project we were working on last uh, on the last web webinar, I can select that and it now opens. The only difference between this project and the project we opened last time was I've removed all of the um, hotspots and um, what this also had, which uh, I'm not sure if we highlighted, is that it, in the user data, we gave it a title and in the description, if I just click this button to open up the text editor, we gave it um, some text in the description. And this is where the placeholders will come in and I'll explain as and when we get there. Okay, so this is all about the skin editor. Where do we find the skin editor? Well, it's in the output panel and here we can select from a various number of skins, but we're gonna leave that blank and click the skin button. And this opens up a brand new uh, skin editor window. So what I like to do personally um, is straight away, I'm gonna do a command S. Uh, you can see the keys that I'm pressing appear at the top of the screen. I'm on a Mac on a computer that would have been control S uh, for save. And I'm gonna save this to the projects folder. And I'm just gonna call it skin just to be original. There we go. So that's now my skin saved to the project folder so I can keep open and closing it and not have to worry about saving at a later date or closing it and accidentally not saving it. So I've, I've saved it from the very off. OK, so that said, um, what I want to do is just have a quick look around about the skin editor. So we open it up. Um, we've got a skin canvas. When we click in the canvas, we've got certain things we can adjust, uh, like the canvas size. Uh, the grid is the uh, grid in the middle here. For, you can use that for um, centering and locking and, and whatnot. We've got languages and we've got margin. We've got lots of little bits and pieces in here. I'm not going to go into great detail at the moment. We're going to be covering this later on. Um, but we do have lots of documentation on the skin editor and this skin editor is more in line with Pano 2 VR7. So if you did want to shortcut yourself and have a uh, have a quick peek at what we'll be doing later on in, in the Object 2 VR videos or webinars, then you can have a quick look at there. But we're gonna concentrate on the skin and concentrate on building this project. So the skin then, it comprises of several buttons. We've got a container, which is an, an empty element, but you can put things inside it and it can mask and do some other crazy things. We've got a, uh, a, a rectangle, uh, which you can play with text boxes um, and various other little tools, SVG graphics, you can pull in Lottie, Lottie animations and all the rest of it. Um, as further we go along, they get to more advanced uh, features of the skin editor. Again, we'll cover those in another webinar. But what I want to bring your attention to right away is this little button at the end, and it's called our components toolbox. And when I click this, it opens up this toolbox window. Now, the reason why I'm coming here, because our components toolbox serves a couple of functions. One, it's where you can save all of um, your own made components, but also 
you can use pre-built components because if you have a look here you can see that we've got a, a bunch of hotspots and we've got um, uh, some controllers uh, di different colors um, we've got different categories for different types um, with the categories these ones uh, come uh, uh, with object 2 VR but you can add your own categories or if you build something in the skin editor you can group them together and save it as a component but what we're interested in today is just the icons and when I click on icons you can see we've got a repository of all these icons um, there's actually more to this um, to, to the feather uh, 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 scheme of icons and here is a link that will take you to the feather um, website and you can add more if you wish but for this particular project um, what we actually want is to get a uh, rotate left right zoom in zoom out buttons so that's what I'm going to look for so I'm just going to double click and I'm adding that to the skin. You can see that's being added as I double click it. There's one there. There's the uh, right one. And as I cursor down, I've got the zoom in and zoom out. I also want to rotate. So I want to show the object rotating. So I'm gonna use a rotate button. Um, I also want to have a drag. So when we drag the object around when we've zoomed in. So we don't actually have a drag icon, it's called move. So I can type in move to uh, filter all of those icons there it is I can double click that just to show you that we've got some filtering going on and the other one is information so info and again we've got an info button there so that's all the buttons that I want to use okay with that done then I can close the uh, skin editor and uh, sorry the um, uh, components toolbox and return back to the skin now Obviously, we've got SVG, blah, 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 and, it, and, and they're counting up. So I want to name these. Now, what you can do is select an element. And as soon as you select an element, you see the element's properties appear in this panel. Now, you can see my properties panel are all expanded. Yours won't be. And the reason for that is um, if you go back to Object 2 VR, just quickly, I don't want to harp on this, uh, like on the Mac, it's Object 2 VR Preferences under the skin. I've selected Remember Open Properties Panel. On the, on the PC, it'll be File Settings, then the same thing. So when you open up the Skin Editor, all of these Properties Panels will be expanded if you've expanded them. If not, they'll just be all collapsed like that, okay? So that's just a, a little tip there too. So if you're like me, we're popping in and out of the skin all the time and you wanna see these open all the time, then that's what you'll need to select. Okay, so. As I said, when we click on an element, we see that element's properties. In this case, it's an SVG. Um, you can see its title. I can click in here and rename it here. Um, I'll show you somewhere else in a second. We can see where it's positioned, anchor points, um, size, um, various things um, in here. We can even change the SGV graphic um, from here or open up the components toolbox and swap it out there. We can do quite a lot here, but the important thing for us today is we can add actions here as well. Okay, so I said we need to uh, rename this really. I can do it here, but the other easiest way is just to double click in the skins tree and just um, type it in. So let's just do left, double click, right. This is gonna be zoom, oh, zoom, not zoom, zoom in. And we are gonna have uh, zoom out. And this will be rotate, drag, and this will be information. Okay, so that's my all my buttons named. Right, okay, now all the buttons are all squidged up top left corner, and they're a little bit too small for my liking. Um, if we have a look into the skin editor, we have this button here, which is our skin preview or live preview. So we click that, and you can see that they all are squidged up. So this is what it's gonna look like when we've created the output, our first output, and you'll see that all the buttons there. In fact, what we'll do, if you like, is do that. Um, just to, and that will also show you what we're gonna start with as well. So this is it. This is the object, um, and there's all the buttons squidged up there. So, right. So what we need to do then is set the right size. Now, again, if I click an, uh, an element, I can set the size. That I want. So as an example, I'll do 40. I can use the tab and do 40 and make it a bit bigger. I could do that for every single one. Or again, you can select one, hold down the shift key and select them all and then do for all of them. And then they all become the same size. So you can 
select all the elements and batch do the size. You can also do the same thing with most of the attributes to an element in here. Okay, now the information button, um, that I want to live in the top right hand corner. So I'm gonna select that and anchor that top right hand corner. Now when I anchor that, you'll see that the position for the X is changed to 600. If I put it back, you'll see it goes back to zero. The interesting thing to look here or look at here is the icon in the tree and the icon in the position. It's saying that it's anchored at the moment. Uh, so it's at the top pointing down and from the left pointing to the right. So top left. If I move it to the top right of the window, you'll see now that it's saying it's 600 pixels from the right. Now, what we have is a couple of shortcuts. If I double click the position icon, or the, the text, it will actually center the, the, the element with the positioning. So I've centered it zero, zero when it's anchored top right. So I can do that. Or if I just use the back button, um, I could just double click on the uh, single icon there and it wouldn't affect this one. I know that didn't really sort of do anything, but I could double click there and it doesn't affect the Y. If I double click the Y, then it does. But double click in position does both. So let's just change the position for that. There we go. So that's where I want that. It's anchored to the top right, which basically means that it will always stay in that position. If I open up the skin preview, there it is. And if I wiggle it about the skin preview, you can see that it's always remaining that same distance from the top right hand corner. Okay, so what I want to do now is align my buttons. Now I've got two lots of buttons here for desktop and mobile use. Now the desktop is going to use the four buttons here and the mobile is going to use the rotate and drag. Okay. Um, now, how do we distribute these? Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. We've re we, we, we resized all the uh, icons to 40 pixels. So the first one could be at zero, zero. And the second one I could set to 40 and that moves it across one. I could select the next one and select the next one and, and change all of those. However, there is a different way we can do this. What we could do is the last one would be 120 pixels, all right? So that's what we're going to do. Call it 120 pixels. Now I can select the bottom icon uh, 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 element and select the top one, and you'll notice that the bottom one is a darker blue. So that's his starting point. And what I can do now is just go to Edit, um, Distribute Elements, Left Edges, Boom, and it does it for me. It's automatically distributed all of the buttons. Now I could have put the minus button or zoom out button a bit further across and it would have evenly distributed them with a gap in between. So that's what it's done. Now, what I want to do is actually put all of these into a little container. As I said, we had a container, so that's what I'm gonna do, draw a container around it. And I'm gonna call this container desktop because I wanna use this for my desktop um, uh, when it's open on a desktop. Right, okay. Um, have a look at the uh, preview. You can see it's up there. We've still got the other buttons visible, but don't worry about that for the second. And what we want to do now is position those bottom middle. So I'm gonna use the anchor again, double click, and it's gonna position those buttons there. But I will bring it up by 23 pixels so you're not actually hitting the bottom of the screen to try and do that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing now for when we're in a, a, a mobile, uh, in, in, in a mobile uh, desktop. So again, I'm going to select the two uh, buttons so I can make them visible in the skin. Anything I'm not working on, I can hide in the skin, or I could actually right button click here and lock in the canvas. And once it's locked, you can click it and drag it and you won't interact with it. But there you go, so that's what you can do there as well. Okay, so I've selected those. Again, I'm gonna select a, a, a container, draw the container around it, and call this mobile. So these are so this is if you like this the elements I want to watch or see when we have a mobile uh, on a mobile display. And again, I need to re, uh, reposition these. So again, bottom. Um, this time round, I'm going to double click the X to bring it to the center, and just type in 23 here, and that puts them into the same area. Now you can see everything is now in the skin. I'll just unlock that, so uh, you can see everything in the skin. If I hide all of these 
buttons in the skin they're still visible in the output so let's have a look at the skin preview again which gives us an idea of what it looks like in the output um, so yeah because we've only hidden it in the skin canvas we haven't hidden it in the output if i want to hide it in the output what i would do is select it and deselect visible here now when we have a look those buttons are gone okay if i then select visible they're back okay so now i want to work with just the desktop buttons for the moment so what i'm going to do is just select the mobile uh, container and then deselect that and those buttons are now gone okay so where far we got um okay so that's where we are um i'm just going to throw it over to karen because we've actually done quite a lot in a little short space of time and i'm worried that i'm going too quickly so i want to just slow it down bring it down a little bit and just shout out to karen do we have any questions we don't have any questions and i don't know is uh martin doing okay on speed everyone for me it's fine uh but that's me <laughs> i won't we we're not getting any uh complaints yet so and no questions so i'm assuming everything is is going okay and i think the problem too is yeah sorry guys i had the chat off now i'm turning the chat on i don't know what this is a i was getting worried um, that we're, i'm just chatting to myself here <laughs> yeah yeah no uh, zoom has that on um uh, default to turn off the chat. Yeah. Thanks, Douglas. Okay. We do have a, oh, we've got Q and A coming in now. Oh, that's because, uh, I didn't have the chat in there, but everyone's saying you're doing fine. Speed's good. We can keep on going. Awesome. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's just have a little look at my list. Um, <laughs> okay. Right. So I've added the buttons. Now what I want to do, um, with these buttons, as you can see in the, uh, skin preview is, I know they've got no actions in there at the moment. They don't do anything. But when I'm my mouse over them, I don't. The mouse is not giving me any feedback. Not to say that I'm hovering over them. So what I'd like to do. Um, so let's just expand all the all, all the tree uh, um, containers so I can see all the buttons in the tree. Is is basically um, when we hover over a set of buttons. So let's just hide those. Um, it is for the pointer to turn into a hand. Now this is. Um, been made simpler, simpler, is that a word? Don't know, but anyway, it's been made simple in object 2 br uh, it, it, with its uh, skin editor, because if we again select an element such as a button, we can change the cursor. Now we have some options here of default, so that's whatever the browser is gonna give you. Um, uh, we can change it to be in a hand. Oh, excellent, so if I do that and roll over it, you'll see that it changes to a hand. Okay, cool. But we also have, inherit right now this is quite cool i'm just going to jump out of this for a second and just give you a little example if i add two rectangles right and i'm gonna uh oh, so let's do two rectangles right okay cool and i'm gonna put a container around those a container as we see is is an element that can contain things and it's good because you can package a bunch of buttons in there and all i have to do is to hide and show the container to hide and show all of those elements but a container by default is permeable in other words it's not an active element okay now to prove this point if i select hand and then we'll open up the skin preview when i move the cursor through the container, nothing happens because it's permeable. But the buttons are set to inherit. So they will inherit the hand cursor from the container, even though the container is not active. So when we hover over them, he says, you see the hand cursor. So basically, all I need to do, so let's just get rid of that, Oop, gone. All I need to do is select the desktop container and set that to hand. And now all of these by default are set to inherit. Let's do the same for the mobile uh, and set that to hand. And so let us, let's uh, create this and have a, a look. Let's have a look at the output. It's gonna be a little bit garbled, I think. Oh no, because we hid the uh, mobile ones. And now you can see we've got a hand coming in. Right, cool. Um, need to do that for the info button as well. So let's just do that information because that Sadly, it's not in a container, so I will have to set that to hand for a single element. There you go. What we could have done is 
set individual buttons to hands and some not if you wanted to do that but the, the quickest way is just the parent container set that to hand and everything works that way okay right what I want to do now is introduce the logic block do, do, do. right a logic block what is a logic block well well first and foremost where do you find it well it's these crazy looking um, icons here crazy looking funny looking don't know but these icons here you've got an arrow going up going down so yes or no one or zero logic okay um, so why I want to do this is not only when we hover into a button do I want the hands uh, the cursor to change to a hand but I want the button to expand a little bit so I want to scale it up so to do that the easiest way is going to be use the logic block so if I select a logic block block it pops open its window and what I'm going to do here is say um, mouse over when that equals true set it to 110 percent there we go Oh, let's do 110, sorry, not 100, or is it'll go into an egg shape. Right, so now when we have a look at the skin preview, you can see it expands. Wow. All right, so what I can also do here is we can enable a transition. So we turn that on, and I'm gonna get the transition time because I want it to expand, transition to expand, like from 100 to 110, but I don't want it to, take too long. So I'm going to have 0.4 seconds to do that. And let's just see what that gives us in using the skin preview. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's, that's yeah, I like that. That's good. Right, now, obviously I can select each one and go through them one at a time. Or what I can do is select the logic block and select copy. Click OK. And now I can select all of the other elements. So I'm going to hold down command on the PC, it would be uh, control. But I can then going to select all the other elements that need to expand on mouse over. I can then go to the scaling logic block and click paste. Now, the one that we just copied had a transitional effect. This one doesn't. So it's saying, you know, there's transitional settings, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to copy them or keep this? Well, I don't want to keep this because these don't have any transitions. So I'm going to copy the transition settings. So now all of those elements will have the mouse over effect. So that was just as easy as copy and pasting. All right, so you, so take your time to set up one the way you want it, and then you can just copy and paste to make that real quick. Okay. Uh, Martin, quickly, can you just go back over the that output and, and move the mouse just maybe a little bit uh, slower so we can really get a good look at the effect? Oh, at the output, right, okay. So there we go. So that's going from yeah, that's 100 to 110 yeah. percent. Here we go. Cool. Thanks. I think it's uh, it's slower on the on us on our end on our streaming oh, end okay. here. What probably doesn't help is the because I'm using this green line around the mouse, so you know when I'm doing a click and a right click, you know you get this. Oh, mm -hmm. So you can see the differences, and of course I've got the you can see my letters when I type as well. So that might might have something to do with it. I don't know. Anyway. So let's get uh, back to this. Um, if you do spot anything, by the way, Karen, or if anyone spots anything, shout to Karen. Karen can shout to me and I can slow down and do something. So, you know, we have all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. You've got an hour. Um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was that was just me because I was having a hard time. Seeing yeah, no, it, so no, no worries. Yeah. No worries. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, so. Um, so that was the logic block for um, the scaling. But what I also want to do is with the zoom in and out, now we can do this with the rotate left and right as well, but the project is it wraps around. So when we go around all of the images at the bottom here, and when we get to the end one, it starts at the, fr uh, at the first one again, so it's just wrapping around. So there is no limit. But with zoom, there was only so far we can zoom in and so far we can zoom out, okay? So what we're gonna do is add an alpha that when we've zoomed in as far as we can, to give the viewer or the user um, an indication that they've done that, we're going to alpha out the button. And the way we do that, again, we're gonna use a logic block. So we're gonna use the alpha logic block. So I'm gonna select the zoom in button. As you can see, it's set to alpha is 100%, so it's a solid. I'm gonna select the logic block to it. And what we're going to do here is um, view 
and I'm going to say can this is the zoom in button so can zoom in right so it can zoom in equals true no I want to change that to false so when I've zoomed in as far as I can I can't go any further so I can't zoom in anymore I'm going to set that to 0.4 okay all right so let's have a look at what that looks like just on its own um, I think it's pretty much self-explanatory with the logic blocks but if we zoom in and then when I get to its limit you can see that the alpha is then kicking in I can't go any further so we can zoom out well I can't zoom anything at the moment because we haven't given it any actions but you can see when I zoom in it goes uh, it fades out when I zoom out it won't because we haven't set that logic block yet so let's do that on the zoom out one so again very very simple um, alpha the logic block to it and we'll say that um, uh, on the view so this is zoom out can zoom out is it true no it's when it's false so I can't zoom out any further we're gonna set that to 0 0.4 okay so that's those logic blocks uh, set for the um, let's see those both working actually let's do that again also it also shows you how quick the output can happen as well so you can see we're zoomed out we can't zoom out any further I'm using the mouse and when I zoom in you can see that that the alpha changes as well okay so you've now got a visible visual feedback visible visual well, okay visual feedback to the user that you've reached your limits so I guess what we need to do now is actually give these buttons some actions. Right, so um, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start with the left and the right buttons so they sort of rotate. So we're gonna select the, um, the, 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 the button in question. I'm gonna cursor down, I was a little bit quick there, I just tend to flick things around, but you cursor down to the bottom of the properties and you end up with the actions. You can either press the plus or double click in the source and you end up with the actions properties panel or, or, or the actions panel sorry not properties and you can select your source now this the source is either mouse click but in this case I don't want it to click I want it to be pressed because what I want to do is press and hold it and let the thing roll down so if I then cursor down to here you can see that we've got some other mouse in uh, uh, source actions so I'm going to select press and then what we want to do is object movement and pan left now pan left uh, 100% speed that's going to be quite quick I am going to actually leave it like that so we can see it being very quick um, so let's just do that so let's save and export hover over it click it yeah it's going way too fast there you go so I'll just do that again there you go so way too fast so what we can do is go back to the button go back to the action by double clicking and then setting the speed again I'm going to do about 0 0.4 you can go slower or do whatever you want now I need a similar action to the uh, next button up to rotate right but rather than starting a new action what I can do is select it I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut command C or control C on the PC I could also right button click and select copy I'm going to select the right button and I'm now going to command V for pasting or again control V on the PC and that's copied that action into the rotate right button but it still says pan left but all I've got to do is when I double click and open it press is already set the action is already already mouse movement the speed is already set all I've got to do is change to pan right click OK done all right so that's again fairly simple to do I'm gonna do very something very similar for the zoom in zoom out buttons so if I select one of those I am going to go uh, mouse pressed. Um, we are going to view, oh no, not view, uh, mouse movement or object movement. I'm going to zoom in. Um, I'm going to leave that 100% because it, we've actually got quite a lot of zoom, so I want to do that fairly quickly. And again, what I can do is just the keyboard shortcuts, just copy that, select the next one, press paste. When I cursor down to the uh, action, I just then set that to zoom out all right and then that's done so let's just see that output functioning okay so we've got the left and right and we've got the zoom in and you can see till I reach the limit and then zoom out and again when we get to the limit boom it's done so we've built a nice little interface and this little interface is for our um, uh, computer now what I didn't mention at the start I think I mentioned it um, in the last webinar is that 
By default, Object 2 VR has auto move mode. In other words, when we're zoomed out and you click and rotate or click and drag, it rotates. When you zoom in and you click and drag, you're dragging the image around. Now, with this particular controller that we've per, uh, built, we can zoom in and if you want to rotate it, you can just use these buttons to rotate it. Okay. Now on a mobile, as an example, you'll open that up and then you'll pinch zoom. Um, and yeah, you've probably got too many buttons at the bottom there. You don't want to, you want to keep the, 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 the interface nice and slick and, and you want less buttons. So what we're going to do here with the mobile, as we said, the, the mobile button is going to have, or the, or the mobile interface. So these, these, these buttons are going to hide, but on the mobile, uh, what's going to happen is we're only going to have this single button where when we zoom in, we can click the button to rotate it, click it back. To, to drag and we're going to do that in a second um, I will uh, throw this open again to Karen is there because oh, because we were late to starting with the questions is there any more coming in Karen on the Q&A mm, no not uh, not yet but uh, I wanted to um, address a question by Douglas who I answered him um, by typing and anyone who's listening to this video afterwards doesn't wouldn't hear this or see this so and he was just curious uh where the previous webinars are because you mentioned them oh, earlier oh, oh, I can show you, I can show and uh yeah they are we put all of our w webinars on our website here it is under documentation webinars boom right and they're all here and and we only had one object to vr webinar so far so if you've missed it it's okay you haven't missed that much um, but Martin, can you click on that page while you're there? Because it's nice to, we also put the videos on YouTube, but what's not on YouTube are the examples that we're doing in the webinar. And sometimes we uh, even give you content to work with the project uh, content. And if you scroll down, Martin, yeah, you can also go directly to the different chapters in the webinar. And then of course there's the video itself. You can also watch it on YouTube. Yeah. That's all. And in the meantime, no one has asked any questions, so um, I'll crack I on think... then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. That's time. See, that's right. Okay. Sorry, I was looking away and talking. I shouldn't have done that, but anyway. Um, right. Okay. So we've now got our controller for the desktop, and what I'm going to do now. Now I'm happy with that. I can hide that, and um, it will still appear in the output as said. All right. So to stop it appearing in the output, I'm just going to select that container and just deselect it visible. Now, if you're gonna do that, remember you've done that and don't panic on the output and you can't find something because you've turned it off, you've deselected it. Right, so I'm going to now select the um, mobile uh, controller, if you like, or, or the controls, and I'm gonna set these to being visible so I can see them and we can work with it. Right, okay, so that's, so deselect those, the mobile one, select it, don't know where I was going with that. Obviously not enough coffee. Right, there we go. So there is the mobile controller that we're gonna build. And we have two buttons. Now, these two buttons are stacked. These will be stacked on top of each other. And the reason being for that is one will replace the other. Now, again, this is logic block stuff. So I'm going to deselect visible for both of these buttons. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the rotate button, go into its logic block, and we are going to have a look at um, 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 what are we looking at? Uh, player, and we are looking at view mode. All right, so what we'll be doing is changing the viewer mode. We'll be changing from rotation to dragging it or drag mode, all right, to move it around to once we've zoomed in to drag it around. So it's move mode. So what we're saying is move mode equals rotate, which this is. I'm going to set that to true so this icon will become visible in move mode or in, in sorry in in rotate but if we now click drag all right um i'm going to select its visible logic block and again um with the player uh view mode equals drag mode when that is true or rather whilst it's in drag mode visible will be true now we can even though without any actions we can see this now working so if I have a look at the output, there it is. As soon as I zoom, because at the moment it's in rotate mode because of this auto uh, uh, um, mode that we've got when we zoom in. So there it is, rotate. And when I zoom in, you'll see that it now 
changes to drag mode. But the idea is that we'll be able to press this and change the mode. So when we're zoomed in on a mobile, I can drag it around. If I want to move it, click on the button, rotate it a little bit, click back and drag it around again. So that's, that's the whole point of this. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is, or what you could do, but we're not, is again, select a button, scroll down to actions and add an action. All right. Now, the action for this would be something like um, mouse click, um, uh, player settings and set view mode. And this one would be rotate. It wouldn't be rotate, actually. It would be um, drag mode because you'll see the rotate symbol to saying that you're rotating. But when you click it, you want to then click it and make it into drag mode. Sounds all very confusing, but you can you would do one action at a time. However, however, we don't need to do this at all. And the reason being is because we have three mode settings. We've got rotate mode, drag mode and toggle. Right, cool. So what we can do is forget that and we can add the toggle action to the container, the parent container. So we can go a mouse click, um, player settings, uh, set view mode, toggle. That's it, that's all we need to do. Even though the container itself, don't forget it's permeable, it's not it, It's not clickable, it's, it's an inactive element, but the child elements, these things are active. They can be clicked. So when you click this, um, I think the term we've used in the past is actions bubble up. So if I had an action in this rotate button and an action in the container, on click it would then fire off the rotation action and then fire off the container action, all right? But because none of the buttons have actions, it just fires the container action. Have I left you, if I confused you there, I'm sorry, but let's see this working. So let's just do that. So basically the action is a toggle and it's in the container. And we can now do that, you see, there we go, cool. So if we zoom in, or like, let's just zoom out, zoom in, goes to, we're in auto move, uh, auto move mode, but I can now click to rotate and rotate the object and then click again to move it. So just imagine that being a mobile phone, uh, your thumbs on the button, so you can pinch zoom in and out and you can, you know, you can do what you're not, but now this button will allow you to rotate where you want to move, see something, say the front wheel, go back to move and zoom into the wheel. You know, so there's a nice little button there to do that for your mobiles. Right, okay, so we've got the two control types in the skin, but how do we switch between the two? Right, well, again, logic blocks people, this is what it's all about. So let's just have a look here. If we have a look at the um, desktop container, I'm now gonna set that back to being visible, and we're gonna give it another logic block, but this logic block is gonna be player width. Now, when we click on the trigger, you can see we've got lots of things here. And again, as we progress through the uh, the skin webinars, um, we will cover some, uh, like we'll start be covering more of these options. But at the moment, we're gonna look at player width. And we're gonna say, and if I click on the equals, I'm actually gonna say if it's less than or equal to, as an example, 600 pixels, right? If it is, I want to hide these buttons because I'm assuming a desktop is going to be wider than 600 pixels so it's visible right because by default we can see it so what this logic block is saying is if the player width is equal to or less than 600 pixels we're going to hide this and it's going to go so we can't see it so inversely to that if I select the mobile one again it's deselected by default but what we'll say is if player width again equal to and less than 600 pixels, we are now gonna set that to being true. Okay, cool, so as as the desktop controller disappears, the mobile one will appear. And let's see that in operation. So this is what I like about the skin preview is you've got the, the sizes here, so you can test this. So as I get down to 600, six, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, two, one, zero, boom, it's changed. Here we go. And we can open it back up, so you can now see that all working and we've now built, if you like, a very simple, but it's now a responsive skin. So on the desktop, we've got all the buttons and on a mobile, we've just got the one because you can pinch zoom and use your fingers to, to spin the object around. Okay, so that's quite cool. And let's just take a look at that in the output. 
again the reason why i set 600 because a browser on a desktop doesn't actually it can't get that narrow um so i've set it to 600 so we can see it doing its business so you know so again you could use your fingers to to to, to rotate and zoom in um you can drag it around but when you can click you can zoom it you can spin it around again and then back to there so that's that's our responsive skin that we've built okay so I think we've done quite a bit there. Um, I'm going to shout out to Karen again. Do we have any any questions, Karen, before I move on to the next next bit? Uh, it's all clear. No questions. Okay. All right. I'm starting to wonder now if we've got any people listening. <laughs> I think they're there. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. So that's all done then. So what I want to do now, he says, is we've now got a controller uh, for desktop and mobile. Um, what I want to do now is look at the information button and this brings us on to placeholders. Now, we assume that uh, because this is an object to VR uh, webinar, um, we're going to have a few new people to our software. Um, but if you're not, you know, this is probably going to be a good, re a good refresher. Um, so let's close the skin for the second. All right. And just go back to the project. Now, as we said at the start, we've got a project title and a project description. If I click on the uh, text editor button there, you can see the description all there. Right, cool. So that's part of the project. Okay, so what I'm going to do in the skin is I want a text box pop up to display that text. So I'm going to add a uh, click on the text box, click add it. And what I'm going to do is anchor it in the center. And I'm going to make it uh, 300 by, I don't know, 250 pixels. Um, the reason being is that 300 wide will fit on a mobile screen as well as on a desktop, and it won't look that bad. And to center it in, this, in the center of the uh, skin editor, all I've got to do is double click position, boom, and it's in the center. Okay. Now, I'm going to name the text box to info. All right, so it's an info pop-up. And what we're going to do is cursor down and you're going to see we've got a tab in the text box called text. Now I'm going to just to highlight that and delete that. That's probably more muscle memory than anything else. And what we're going to do is use placeholders. Now there's two ways of doing this. The first way, which I'm not going to use, is you can use the insert placeholder button. So as an example, when I click this, it then tells me what information do I want to grab and display in this text box. Now, I want to display the user data title and description. So I will cursor down to user data, select user data title and click. And this is the placeholder that will pick up and display the user data title. All right, so as an example, let's just do that. Let's just show you what it looks like. So there it is. It's picked up the, the title there. So it saves you having to type in the text again and again and again. Now, I said I'm not going to do it this way um, because the way I want to do it is open the text editor. There we go. So there it is. I'm going to go to visuals because I like that. And I'm going to type. And so, uh, right, so rather than type anything, I'm going to use the insert placeholder button in the text editor. So again, use data, hotspot title, put it in. All right, I'm going to hit return, and then I want to hotspot, uh, use data, and you sorry, not hotspot, but use data, and then description. Then what I'm going to do is highlight the use data title and make that bold, and I'm going to highlight the user data description and use that as italics. Click OK, and then you can see them there. All right, now let's just have a quick peek of what this looks like. It's not formatted in any way shape or form so it's going to look a little bit ugly until we get to work but you can see it's now picked up all of that text so that placeholder has picked up the text now we've got placeholders for hotspot hotspot titles hotspot descriptions we've got various placeholders for certain things even hot uh, hotspot positions and all sorts um we use placeholders quite a lot throughout pano 2 vr and object 2 vr um but you know, for this case, we're just using the user data placeholders to display the text. Right, now I want to clean this up a little bit. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the text box and we're going to go down and 
we can see the text box attributes here. I'm going to deselect uh, the default because I want to increase the size to 16. The weight, we could set it to bold if we want to. I've not done that because I've set the bold in the text editor. The horizontal, um, it's aligned center. I don't want to do that. I want to align uh, left. And the vertical is aligned at the top. I don't want to do that. I want to put it in the center so it's at the bottom. So with all the text, it will be quite nicely in the center. Now, the other thing it will be is it's pushed right up against the left-hand edge. Now, we've got padding. I can type in a number here. If I typed in 10, we'd have 10 pixels padding all the way around. But if we click this little button, you'll see that we can add the padding on each edge individually. So I'm going to add 10 pixels to the left, uh, to the right, sorry, and to the left. And there you can see it brings it in. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see what else we're going to do with that. So under the, so that's the, um, uh, the position appearance rectangle is what I wanted. The other thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the border. I don't want the border and I want to give it a 10 pixel radius to give it curved edges. So let's save and click and see what this looks like, shall we? And here we go, and there it is. So it's nice curved edges, it looks okay. It's white against a white background, unfortunately, but don't worry, we will be changing that. And so yeah, so that's where it is at the moment, but of course, this button doesn't do anything, that doesn't hide and show. So how do we do this? Well, this is back to the skin, back to actions. So we're gonna make the information button visible. There it is, so it's back there, select it. We are gonna go back down to the actions, and we are gonna say on mouse click, we're going to go to uh, visibility and if I had separate buttons, I could have a separate action for show and a different button for hide, but we've also got the toggle element visibility. Now the target by default is self, so I'll actually be toggling itself. So this button, which is not what we want to do, because as soon as I click it, it disappears. I can't toggle it back again, um, but we actually want to toggle the info box. All right, so you can either select the drop down menu, select info there, or if you've got lots and lots of elements and you know it's ID, just start typing, you get to it, hit return, done. All right, so that's it. An, an, another easier way of selecting an, a, a target. Okay, so that's what we've done there. And if we have a look at the info text box, you'll see that it's visible. So I need to deselect visible because we want it hidden to start with. So let's just save and let's create the output and let's see what we've got. So let's just Bring this open and we can now toggle the info panel there we go all right okay um i'm just going to say to karen that you know i'm going to move on to um looking at the uh, logo and and using the color tool but before i jump into that um we got anything no yes no thinking about it no no i think yeah keep on going keep on going and uh if I, you know, if if any questions come up, um, we can answer them at the end. Somebody stop me! Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. Cool. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's dive into this then. So, this is a Vespa, uh, and what we're gonna do, sorry, I've just closed that. So I'm gonna open the skin again. Now everything here, I'm happy with. I don't need to see it anymore. So I can pop, 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 make it all disappear. Gone. So I can now start working with a canvas and knowing I'm not going to destroy or move anything or anything else or select it by accident. But what we have got here is their logo. So I'm going to drag it into the skin editor and there's the logo. Now I can grab out of a corner and I can resize it and do whatever I want. All right. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to resize it, but I wanted to resize it, um, keeping the aspect ratio. Now, again, what we've got here is our undo button. If I click and hold, you'll see that we've got, since because obviously this happens, this clears every time you close the skin, but when you open the skin, it, it, it takes a note of everything you're doing and you can jump back. So I can go back to empty where we didn't, or can go back there where we added it. Um, let's click on that, you know, and yeah, so we've got this um, uh, back history. That's the word I was looking for, history. So we've got this history thing, right? So we've, we've, we've done what we wanted to do there, but what I want to bring your attention to, because I said we want to be able to change its size using an aspect ratio. So here is our little chain or link icon, and we're linking width and height. There we go. So all I need to do now is just set in, I don't know, 150, because that's what I want, uh, for the size of the logo, and it changes it using the aspect ratio. Again, we're going to be using our anchoring. So we're going to anchor top, 
um, top left. So I just double click position and that resets it to wherever the anchor is, that zero, zero. But in this case, I do want to add 10 pixels either side actually, make it so it's not pushed up into the corner. Okay, so that's the image. And again, what we're gonna do is double click in here and call it logo. All right, cool. All right, now we've got a couple of options with this. If you just want a logo and you don't want it to interfere with anything, um, you can say it permeable. Now, what, what I mean by that is if I click on this and we have a look at the output, um, here, if I click this, I can move it around. If I click and drag in the icon, uh, the, the logo, I can't move it because it's because it's an active element, all right? Um, but if I was to click the logo and go down to where it says permeable and select it and then create an output, okay. Oh, let's create an output. I can click and drag it through it. Let's close both of those. So that's what permeable is doing. It's a it's an element you can see in the skin, but you've got no interaction, and the and the mouse clicks through it and interfe uh, it interferes, interacts with the object. But I do want to click it, so I'm going to turn off or deselect permeable. And what I want it to do is I actually want this to open the Vespa website. So how do we do that? Well, we need an action. That's what we need. So we'll we'll cursor down. We'll get to actions, double click the source, and it's gonna be a mouse click, and it's gonna be a go to URL, Wait. And we can just, I mean, I've, I've, I've already got it copied. I'm gonna paste in the URL to the website. Now, obviously, if it's quite long, you can open up the text editor and see it all there. Um, you can even use placeholders there as well. Yeah, so that'd be cool. Um, but the other thing I want to bring your attention to is target. So by default, blank is also blank. So underscore blank, so that's what I'm gonna choose. If we chose underscore self, when we click this and opened up the website, it, the, the, the website would replace the object. All right, uh, don't wanna do that because if we use blank, it will open up either a new page or new tab depending on how your browser is set. So I'm gonna leave it to blank. So we click okay, close, save, create output, boom. And when we click that, out comes our web page. Now that didn't do what I wanted it to do because I wanted it blank and I probably didn't do that. So let's just select. No, I think you did a uh, top. Right, so did I? All right, okay, let's click. Ah, I did top, well done. Right, so I'm gonna go to blank. And uh, yeah, so that now is gonna open up a new web page. And let's just have a look at that. Click, and it does, right. So in a separate page, or it could be a separate tab depending on how your browser's set. Okay, cool. Um, what I want to do is give this some interaction. Uh, sorry, tell a lie, not interaction. Well, yeah, I do want to give it some actual interaction, actually. So if we select that, I'm going to create the hand cursor to hand. So now if we open up the skin preview, when I hover over it, you'll see the hand cursor. But what I actually meant to say is we've made this skin responsive. And of course, on a nice narrow screen, that logo becomes quite large. So what we can do again is use the same scale logic block. So I can go to scaling and I mean, I could just go back to one of the other buttons and copy and paste it, but let's just go through that again. So what we'll say is player width um, is less than or equal to 600. And uh, what we do here, because we're scaling it down, right? So it was, uh, so, so it says, blah. so we're scaling down. So let's just make it 60 by 60 pixels. There we go or not pixels, percentage. So 60% rather from 100 to 60%. Right, okay, so let's have a look at that, see what it's doing. And there we go. Right, have we spotted the mistake yet? Hmm. What it's doing is when it scales down, it's scaling down to the center. I wanna keep it to the left top edge. Now we've already looked at anchoring for position, but we've also got anchoring for the scaling. So let's just open up the preview and move that over. And now if I select top left, you'll see that the Vespa sign goes to the top left. And that's how I want it to be. So that's, that's again, that's a scaling anchor. So that's something that you need to bear in mind. Okay, so we're nearly done with the skin. Um, the only thing I want to do now, let's just have a, let's go back to the output and have a good look at it and see what we've got. So we've got our Vespa that we can spin it around, we can zoom it in and out, we've, we've made it responsive in the fact that when we 
make the screen narrower so on a mobile device it, everything gets uh, smaller than the buttons swap out and um, we've even got our info pop-up but what I want to do is I want to color match this I want to color match the pop-up to the logo the buttons to the logo I want it to be you know so if this was on the Vespa website with this color scheme on their website I want it to match it at the moment it's very monochrome it's very black and white and yeah and I want to color match it so um, for that then what we'll do now this is gonna be the last thing we're doing in the webinar is going to the skin editor and we're going to the color tool now we do have a separate webinar all about the color tool because it can do quite a lot we're only going to be using a fraction of its power at the moment um, but we do have a separate webinar on it that does go into detail um, I'm not sure if Karen can put a link into the chat or something I don't know but we'll certainly put a link in on the page um, but anyway when you open up the color tool this is what it looks like all right and what it's saying here or that we were showing black and white so if I was to select the info button and select the color tool you'll see that it just shows black and that's because the SVG is the only color in there is black and if I click on this little arrow to show it says SVG stroke black and I can just change the color from there okay in fact let's do that I'll double click I'll open up the color selector and what I'm going to do is pick uh, screen color so I could click if I click and hold I can then drag it out and drag it anywhere I want on the screen to sample a color so I'm going to sample that blue all right so there it is whilst I'm here I know I'm going to use this blue throughout the project I can click and drag that into my custom colors to use for later so I don't have to keep sampling that color all right so that's that I'm going to click OK and apply and that button will now be a blue button it's a dark blue button but it's a blue button and it now matches the logo okay now yes we can do this per button but like always there is a quicker way to do things so what I'm going to do here is do exactly that I'm going to select everything that I want to change the color with so I'm going to click um, all of these buttons the rotate button I'm even going to select the info screen now when I've selected all of these elements I can click the color tool and the color tool will now list everything that I've selected now as I said the skin is pretty monochrome uh, monochromic or monochrome uh, I forget the word monochrome that's the one um, so it's black and white and that's exactly what I've got but if I click the down arrows here it tells me what's using what color so I want to make this match the color of this website so the text background is white hmm okay um, background element I want that to be blue so I'm going to double click this and choose the blue okay the text element text itself is black I want that to be white so I'm going to select white the text element border well we're not using that so I don't have to worry about that and the SVG stroke color I want it to be black blue as well okay so that's done so in one foul swoop I can click apply done close save and create the output and we will end up with a color matched version of this output and it's responsive and there you go that's it for this webinar I believe we have reached everything we want to do we've achieved all the goals we've created a fairly basic interface but has all the important buttons um, and we've seen the logic blocks uh, which again is the first time for object 2 VR where we can make responsive skins again it's very basic because um, we're starting off slowly it can get deeper it can get a little bit more uh, complex but as you can see you don't have to very very simply we've made something that's very acceptable okay that is my last one um, uh, as in uh, that's all I'm going to say at the moment um, Karen uh, do you have any do we have any questions anything you want to add we don't have we don't have any questions uh, but I just want to let everyone know I put into the uh, chat a link to the documentation on the color tool which has a link to a uh, webinar on, on the color tool and there's also a tutorial a regular um, recorded tutorial and the webinar and the tutorial are both using Pano 2 VR but the, it's the same it's the same tool, color tool. it's the same color yeah tool. same yeah. tool so um, that's the only uh, difference there 
and yeah, no, still no, no questions. I'm assuming it was pretty clear, and yeah, <laughs> it's either that or my internet connection's broke. One of the two. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it, all good. Right. Um, next webinar, then um, we don't actually have an ETA on this or a date on this, but what we'll be doing is looking at variables and custom properties and some other bits and pieces. We're just diving a little bit deeper and we're adding to this project. And what we'll be introducing is how to build. Once we've covered those, we can then start to look at building our own pop-up hotspots for PDFs and videos and all of those sort of things. Now, of course, in the first webinar, we just added the, um, uh, the hotspots and added one of the uh, skins that come with Object 2VR. What's important about these webinars about the skin editor is we're building them from scratch. Um, but um, how is time actually? Can I do one last thing? I would say, yeah, okay. people are still here. They haven't no one's, no one's, gone away. Because we uh, did get this question. I, I've seen this question. I'm not sure if we got it in the webinar, if it was on support or, or somebody else got the question and I overheard it. I really can't remember. But what it was, was obviously we have lots uh, we we have our own skins all right the, so let's just pick one let's pick the nito skin all right and the question was can i add a logo to that now if i pick that skin and open it you can see that ooh, there's a lot in there there's a lot going on don't worry we will be getting there but you can see everything's hidden apart from that one thing so i'll hide that as well and someone asked about you know can i add a logo to one of our pre-built skins well the answer is yes so basically you do the same thing drag us drag the logo in Okay, I'm going to set the aspect ratio, set that back to 150, like we did last time. Double click the position to anchor it on the top um, uh, uh, top left. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll bring it out by 10 pixels either way, so it's not bunched up to into the corner. Um, we can call that logo. But the only, and of course, the other thing we can do is add the, you know, the, the mouse click, go to URL, blah, blah, blah. You can do all of that or make it permeable or do whatever you want to do with it, as we as we already uh, discussed. But the only thing that will happen here is because you're using one of our own skins, when you press close to save it, it will complain. It says this skin is right protected, which it is. But what you would do is click OK, and then you could save this. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Um, so let's just put... Uh, and we can call it Nito Webinar. Uh, click Save. I mean, obviously you'd save it to your project folder or whatever, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to delete it afterwards. But we could then process the output, and there we have the the um, uh, 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 the 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 skin with the logo added as well. So the answer to the question: Can you add your own logos to our skins? Yes, but the only caveat is you've got to save the skin out because they're right protected. But yeah, I just thought whilst we had time, I would let's just that bin that just show you how that was done that was all anyway um so yeah uh, i think you know as i say that's 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 the webinar done i think we've covered everything and a bit more um i hope i've, I've also tried to throw in a little a few tips and tricks and things like that i'm still showing the old skin let's just make another output boom here we go and yeah just hope you got something out of it and uh yeah, until next time, as they say. I think as far as um, when it's going to be, I'm not sure that it's still going to be a TBA. Um, I'm not sure when we're all together next. Uh, It'll be probably in 2024. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But the, just before we close, I just wanted to uh, just make a little clarification that you can enter the skin editor from two different places. Ah, uh, yep. And I just want, just maybe Martin, you can just do a quick clarification of why there's a skin editor button in the toolbar and why there's one in the in the web output. Right. Um, you you have the ability that um, you can actually copy and paste elements from one skin to another. Um, so it could be that you're working on the skin in the output, but you can open this skin editor, and then go. Hang on. Let's go. File. Um, open recent. Uh, open the skin so there's the recent so there's that skin so I could put that elsewhere on a different monitor or whatever and then I can open this skin and I can either use this skin as a reference for information of for a skin I'm working on or we can copy and paste elements across there and so yeah you can have two skin editors open simultaneously um, so yeah that's that's why that's there Unless you can think of any other good reasons, Karen. But yeah, yeah, that's 
that's why i think yeah if the i think the what's good to know is when you add a skin in the web output it's associated with that output output yep. like you can have multiple <clears throat> excuse me outputs and uh if you create a skin using the one in the toolbar this get this is not specifically um uh, associated with that web output yeah so you could just b build a skin i mean you can do the same thing with this one here but absolutely uh, so yeah. i could have opened this as an example um opened a skin go to new and open and open a skin from a different project that had a different set of buttons to the skin i'm working on so two different completely different skins and then i can copy and paste and borrow bits from each and swap them over or do whatever i want or just look at it for reference say you know how big did i make that certain container and things like that but yeah and i was you know as karen says um quite rightly so which i forgot sorry um is yeah you can open up this button allows you to open a skin and any skin not the not just the one in the project you're working with so yeah good call yeah that was just something i wanted to no, no, absolutely. quickly touch on other than that i don't think there's there aren't any other questions and i think we covered uh i think we covered everything you know all the basics really well thanks martin well thank you to everybody else yeah. and if this is going to yeah. be our last one then i think we will all say to everyone out there happy holidays or yeah. merry christmas enjoy. or whatever you want to call it but yeah, yeah enjoy and en enjoy the season and uh we'll see you on the flip side probably <laughs> absolutely yeah i hope so and yeah so thanks a lot for your attention thanks for your questions and yeah have a good have a good one goodbye everyone bye